Good day, folks. Benjamin Yurkovich here with Washington Weather Chasers. We got some active weather on the way this weekend. And right now we do have some light showers that are traveling through Western Washington, but those are gonna to continue to decrease as we go throughout the day. And looking off into the future, things are beginning to look more and more interesting as we head towards next weekend with the European model showing quite the beast offshore, but a lot is going to change. So here's looking at the NAM 3 cam, and we can see the light showers that are on the radar right now, and those showers decrease mostly by late this morning. And then as we head off into the future, we get light showers beginning with the next storm system tomorrow morning on the coast, and then showers begin to spread over the rest of western Washington by late morning, and that will increase in frequency and coverage throughout the day. And the main cold front is going to pass through on Saturday night, and then we're going to get post-frontal showers on Sunday, some of which could be thunderstorms. Looking at the European model, here is the average lightning flash density. Been watching Snohomish County. I wouldn't be surprised if there is some lightning and thunder in portions of Snohomish County on Sunday afternoon, but there could also be some uh, one clap wonder variety thunderstorms throughout the rest of Washington as there is going to be some instability present throughout much of the state. And looking at the NAM 3KM composite reflectivity the simulated radar, we can see that cold frontal passage on Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then we got those post frontal showers during the day on Sunday into the afternoon. And right about there on Sunday afternoon up there in Snohomish County, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these was a bit of a one clap wonder. And the storms could also look pretty interesting if you were to go out and try to spot them. But what's beginning to catch my eye more and more in the long term is quite the signal that's being picked up by the models, especially on the European model. Last night, it showed this super deep mid-latitude cyclone just off of the Oregon and Washington coast working its way up the coast. Now, this is not a guarantee by any means in the position of this low, if it is to form sometime around next Friday to Sunday is gonna make all the difference in what kind of impacts do happen. But it is interesting that many of the European members on the ensemble members are showing some sort of mid-latitude cyclone within the region around next weekend. Here's a look at just some of the members. This is one member. The European Ensemble has 51 different members, one of them being the master, and then the rest being different members that have slightly tweaked conditions. And almost every single one of the members shows some sort of mid-latitude cyclone in the region next Friday to Saturday. There's another one, another member, another member, member number nine, member number 10, member number 12, Member number 13, member number 14, that one shows a very classic windstorm trajectory right over the Olympic Mountain Peninsula. Member number 16, further offshore. Member number 18, member number 19. Member number 20 shows a very interesting trajectory. Check out member number 22, deepens right off of the Oregon Washington coast and plows right into Astoria, bringing what would be a pretty brutal windstorm to Oregon. And there are many other members that show similar solutions. So. All this to say, it is not a sure bet that we're going to get a windstorm, but it's pretty interesting seeing so many different windstorm solutions being picked up on the European Ensemble data. And if we were to take a quick look at the most recent run of the GFS, we can see that it also shows that same storm as well being picked up, developing sometime on the day on Thursday, probably peaking in strength on Friday night into Saturday morning and then coming really close to the Oregon and Washington coast. And so all this to say, there's a really strong signal that seems to be being picked up by the models for something to happen around next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This is looking at the Canadian model. Let's see if it also shows something similar. And sure enough, there it is. And it brings it a lot further south. And so that's something that is worth noting is that there's a lot of uncertainty for where exactly this storm is going to go and develop and how deep it's going to be. But as I mentioned yesterday, this is all happening because we're going to be having the jet stream aimed right at our region. I'm going to take a look at the North Pacific view here. Here we have our jet stream streaming across. And we can see that we get this crazy jet extension across 
the Pacific Ocean next week aimed right there at Northern California and curving northward. And this is kind of the look. This is kind of the look for some of our regional windstorms. But it's going to make all the difference, again, on whether or not we get this storm to develop offshore or closer to us. It very well could form further offshore and impacts would be much less at that point. But if it forms closer, we'll have some bigger impacts. But this is going to be something very interesting to keep an eye on as we head into the week. All right, guys, if you're enjoying these videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, you'll probably like the one right over my head. And I will go ahead and talk to you guys later.